Good morning. If you're gonna make useful and beautiful interfaces, you need to start somewhere. So this is our starting point. This series is gonna cover the basics of UI design. And if you haven't already, you can download the 53 pages of designing user interface because a lot of that knowledge is already in the book so you can uh, refresh it at any time. We're gonna start by talking about shapes, which are the building blocks of any interface. And in most cases, they're gonna be rectangles because as some people say, designing UI is actually about moving rectangles around in the right way. I'm gonna be using Sketch, but uh, the principles that I'm gonna show you here apply to any design tool. So you can do the exact same things in Figma, Adobe XD or any other tool. So by pressing A and dragging, I created an artboard, which is gonna be our canvas. Now I can press R for the rectangle and just draw a rectangle. And as you can see, I can move it around, rescale it. And by holding the Alt key over the corners, I can actually rotate it as well. And if you're gonna hold Shift uh, during that as well, it's gonna rotate in 15 degree increments. So this is the mighty rectangle, the building block of any successful interface. And you can also modify its values by hand, so you can uh, change the size and the position of it by entering numbers in the panel on the right. This is actually a more precise way of doing interfaces because you're going to be way more precise with just entering numbers than with moving your cursor around. If you select any of the squares and then hover your mouse over the other one, you can press the Alt key to see the distance between them. So I made a square of 200 by 200 points and duplicated it by pressing Command D or on Windows it's going to be Control D. The size of an object is actually defined by its bounding box and the bounding box is a rectangle in which the object fits. So if you make a circle it's still gonna be 200 by 200 because it fits in a square of that size. And of course rotating a circle won't really yield a result. It's just gonna look the same. All shapes have two main characteristics. One of them is fill, which is basically the color inside it, and the other one is the border, which is the border around it. You can turn them on and off for an object by pressing that little check mark. So an object can have just a fill or just a border or both. And in this case, I have three shapes here. The first one is just a border. The other one is a solid color and the third one is a gradient. And you can define your own gradients as well. All the objects exist on a stack called layers, so you can move them on top of one another. And by moving them on the layer list on the left, you can change which one is on top and which one is on the bottom. Now let's take care of borders first, because they can be very tricky. So I'm making three squares, 100 by 100 points. I'm gonna add a red border to every one of them, so I'm turning off the fill, changing the border to red, and setting the width of the border to 10. Now I'm gonna duplicate that square three times. On the right side of the border color, you have three icons. And they're inside, center and outside. And if you set it to your border, you're gonna notice that the squares actually change their sizes. As shapes, they are still 100 by 100. But the position of the border actually influences the optical size of the element. So the first one is 100 by 100. Then the second one, because it's in the center, it cuts off half the border on each side. So it's 110. And the last one is 120, because it adds 10 points of the border to every side of our square. We can also modify the joints, which are the connecting points of the border lines. So in this case we have 4 of those connecting points. And they can be rounded, they can be diagonal, or they can be completely straight. And straight is usually the default in most apps. A border, of course, has a color, but you can also add a gradient to it and you can even modify the angle of the gradient so it's, for example, diagonal like here. If you select a square and press enter, you're gonna see that there are now four dots on each corner and you can drag those dots to modify the actual shape into something a little bit more organic. You can hold shift to snap to a grid. And also you can add new points on the lines themselves and drag them as well. So here we are, these are the very basic, the very starting points of successful UI designs and you're gonna be using the exact same elements in your future projects. And having those solid basics is really important when starting out because you're not gonna make a lot of the mistakes many people make now. And in time of course you're gonna be able to make a lot more complex things with your designs 
and you'll be making truly beautiful products in no time. So this is our first very basic lesson that we're gonna cover from the free chapters of the book. You can still get those free chapters by signing up at designingui.com. And this is it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video so it's gonna reach more people. And don't forget to subscribe as well. Cheers.